Praise the Lord, everyone. This is Brother Harlan Parrott coming to you today in the name of Jesus Christ, our holy God and Savior. It is the fourth day of November, the year 2009, and we're continuing this wonderful Bible study course, God's Plan for Man. We're in the book of the Revelation of Jesus Christ, and today we're going to study part of lesson number 48, The Beast Out of the Earth. This is found in Revelation chapter 13, verse 11 through 18. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, threescore, and six. That's Revelation 13, verse 11 through 18. The above individual, or second beast, is here mentioned for the first time, and all that is given concerning him in the Bible is recorded in Revelation. He is called the false prophet. In Revelation 16, verse 13, 19, verse 20, and 20, verse 10, which are the only other passages that mentions this beast out of the earth. He is to be a prophet, but a false one, a prophet of the Antichrist and not of Christ. The term, the false prophet, is from the Strong's Concordance, Greek Dictionary, number 5571, Siodes, from Greek, 5574, untrue, in effect, erroneous, deceitful, wicked, false, and a liar. He's mentioned in the following verses. Revelation 16, verse 13. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. Revelation 19, verse 20. And the beast was taken and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. Revelation 20, verse 10. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. In Revelation 16, verse 13 the false prophet is seen with the beast and dragon as sending forth the demon spirits to gather the nations to Armageddon. In Revelation 19, verse 20, the false prophet is seen as being the miracle worker and the co-laborer and leader of the nations along with the beast as he comes against Jesus Christ at the battle of Armageddon. 
The doom of the second beast will be the torment in the lake of fire forever, along with the first beast and the dragon and all rebellious creatures. You see this in Revelation 20, verse 10, where they were cast alive into the lake of fire. The facts concerning him and his ministry in Revelation chapter 13, verse 11 through 18 are. Number one, he is seen coming on the scene of action by John after the vision of the first beast. We see this in Revelation 13, verse 11. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. He is called another beast from Greek alos, meaning another of the same kind and different kind. Denoting numerical distinction, the second of two, where there may be more, as in the following. Now, this word is found in the Greek Dictionary of Strong's Concordance, number 243, is alos, a primary word, else, in effect, different in many applications, more, one, another, and some, another, and wise. Matthew 10, verse 23. But when they persecute you in this city, flee you into another. For verily I say unto you, ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man be come. John 18, verse 15. And Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. That disciple was known unto the high priest and went in with Jesus into the palace of the high priest. You see what the word another actually means. It means another. Therefore, this beast is the second one in this chapter and cannot possibly be the same beast as of Revelation chapter 13, verse 1 through 10. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who was able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them, and power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. If there were only one beast, there would not be two descriptions and statements concerning two different beasts. This point is so clear in this passage that we need not take up the many points of contrast between the two beasts. Point number two, this beast is seen coming up out of the earth, Revelation 13, verse 11. The word earth is the same as world in Revelation 13, verse 3, and earth is in Revelation 13, verse 12. It's from the Greek word in Strong's Concordance, numbered 1093, yea. Concrete from a primary word, soil, by extension, a region, or the solid part, or the whole of the terrain. Globe, 
including the occupants in each application, country, earth, ground, land, world. Revelation 13, verse 3. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. Revelation 13, verse 12. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. In this particular case, it symbolizes the peoples on the earth, as in Daniel chapter 7, verse 1 through 7. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed. Then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters. Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of the heavens strove upon the great sea. And four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse one from another. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked, and it was lifted up from the earth and made stand upon the feet as a man, and a man's heart was given to it. And behold, another beast, a second, like to a bear, and it raised up itself on one side, and it had three ribs in the mouth of it between the teeth of it. And they said, Thus unto it, Arise, devour much flesh. After this I beheld, and lo, another like a leopard, which had up on the back of it four wings of a fowl. The beast had also four heads, and dominion was given to it. After this I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth. It devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. The word sea is also used in a symbolic sense of peoples, as we just read in Daniel chapter 7, verse 1 through 7. And Revelation 13, verse 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and up on his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. Revelation 17, verse 1. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. Revelation 17, verse 15. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest where the whore sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. So that pretty much explains what the waters are there. They're not literal seas and waters that it sits upon, but peoples, nations and tongues. The phrase out of the earth is the same in meaning as out of the sea as is proven by similar construction in Daniel chapter 7 verse 3 verse 17 where the four beasts came up out of the sea and in the interpretation they are stated to be four kingdoms coming up out of the earth. There is no intimation that this beast comes out of the underworld of spirits and is a resurrected or reincarnated man that has lived on the earth before as is taught by some scholars. Some say that he is Judas who will come up out of the underworld because his characteristics are like those of Judas and that he will be a leader in worship, be idolatrous and work miracles as Judas did. These arguments based upon similar acts in the lives of men are not sufficient proof of this. Others claim that the first beast will be Judas from the underworld, but as we shall see in chapter 31, no human being can come up from the underworld and fulfill the office of either of these beasts. The beasts symbolize two natural men as the sea and earth symbolize peoples. They are yet future and will be born and live a natural life 
like all other men and rise in power out of the peoples of the earth to carry out their intended mission of these prophecies in the will of God. Point number three, the second beast has two horns making him look like a lamb, but he speaks as a dragon. His lamb-like appearance will make him a fit man for his office, thus causing him to be looked upon as a wonderful prophet and man of religion. Combined with this lamb-like appearance will be his dragon or serpent-like deceiving speech. This and a few miracles will complete his method of deception. The expression spake as a dragon should best read was speaking as a dragon, showing that when John saw him coming out of the mass of humanity, he was speaking. And that was one of his most conspicuous things that he could see about him. Point number four. He will exercise all the power of the first beast before him and cause the earth to worship the first beast whose deadly wound will be healed. Revelation 13 verse 12. He will be the executive of Antichrist and exercise Satan's power which will be given to the first beast. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 8 through 12. And then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Revelation 13, verse 2 through 4. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast, and they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? The length of the existence of this second beast in power is not stated, but he is not to rise till after the first one does, so it cannot be for more than three and one half years. He will exercise this power before or in the presence of the Antichrist. He is never mentioned apart from the Antichrist, so it must be that the two will work in close union and perhaps withstand the two witnesses, just like Janus and Jambres withstood Moses in power and miracles. We see these two sorcerers mentioned in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 8, which withstood Moses and Aaron in the days of Pharaoh. Now as Janus and Jambres withstood Moses, so did these also resist the truth men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. Point number five. He doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire to come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Revelation 13, verse 13. The word wonders comes from the Greek Simeon. And it's in Strong's Concordance in the Greek Dictionary, number 4592. Simeon is the way it's pronounced. Neuter of a presumed derivative of the base of Greek 4592. Simeno. An indication, especially ceremonial or supernatural, miracle, sign, token, or a wonder. 
Its meaning and usage are explained at the beginning of chapter 16. The purpose of these signs wrought by the false prophet is to deceive men to accept the Antichrist as God. He deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. Revelation 13 verse 14. Satan has continually deceived the whole world. Revelation 12 verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. But here he has planned the worst deception ever known, which is to be permitted of God, because men receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 8 through 12. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie that they all might be damned who believed not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. First Timothy 4 verse 1 through 3 Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, and commanding to abstain from meats which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. Revelation 9, verse 20 and 21. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils, and idols of gold, and silver and brass and stone, and of wood which neither can see nor hear nor walk. Neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. Revelation 13, verse 3. And I saw one of his heads as he were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. Revelation 13, verse 12 through 18. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them that dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast, which had the wound by his sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause, that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. And his number is six hundred three score and six. Revelation 14, verse 9. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same would worship the Antichrist, they would receive damnation forever. Their smoke of their torment would ascend up forever and ever. Revelation 16, verse 2. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast and upon them which worshipped his image. He will deceive and use these signs to impress his deception, for miracles alone are no complete and definite proof of a divine mission. 
just as the Lord's signs were for the purpose of impressing the people and causing them to ponder, so these also will be to impress those who may not be ready to believe in the beast. Point number six. He will tell the earth dwellers to make an image to the first beast. The image will be made and set up in the temple of God to be worshipped. Matthew 24, verse 15. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. The false prophet will have power to give life to the image of the beast that it should both speak and cause all who will not worship it to be killed. This will be a wonderful sign in itself that a material image could be given power to speak and act. We see these truths in Revelation 13, verse 14 and 15. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast, which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Point number seven. The second beast will cause all classes to receive a mark in their right hands or in their foreheads that no man might buy or sell except those who have it. Revelation 13, verse 16 through 18. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, three score, and six. This will result in the martyrdom of those of the great multitude which no man could number of all nations, as seen in Revelation chapter 7, verse 9 through 17. After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb clothed with white robes and palms in their hands, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts and fell before the throne on their faces and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes, and whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, these are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore are they before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Revelation 13, verse 7. And it was given unto him to make war of the saints and to overcome them, and power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. Revelation 14, verse 13. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth, yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works to follow them. Revelation 15, verse 2 through 3. And I saw as it were a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name stand on the sea of glass having the harps of God. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. Revelation 20, verse 4. And I saw thrones, and they set upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, now they had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years.
in the worship of the first beast and his image, men will be so devoted as to say, Who is likened to the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Showing perhaps the worship to be both political and religious. Revelation 13 verse 4. And they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast, who is able to make war with him? It will not be a willing worship on the part of many, for force will be used to make them worship. The worship will be of such an apostate nature as to pronounce eternal doom to all who partake. We see this in Revelation chapter 14, verse 9 through 11. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up for ever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Many men will throw overboard all faith in God and Jesus Christ and become the servants of the devil and be controlled by demon spirits to such an extent as to be past redemption. Notice there are three different brands that the followers of the Antichrist may choose from, and they are number one, a mark, or in the Greek, the mark. That this is different from either the name or the number of his name is clear from the following passages where the three are enumerated. Revelation 13, verse 16 through 18, tells of all three. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, three score, and six. Revelation 14, verse 9. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand. We just read a few moments ago that they'd be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels, and in the presence of the Lamb, and the smoke of their torment ascendeth up day and night forever and ever. Revelation 15, verse 2 through 4. And I saw as it were a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast, and over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of God. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou only art holy. For all nations shall come and worship before thee, for thy judgments are made manifest. Revelation 20, verse 4, And I saw thrones, and they set upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast. Neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. What kind of a mark it will be, is not revealed, but it is to be a literal mark in the flesh. Revelation 13, verse 16. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Revelation 14, verse 9. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, perhaps it will be the emblem of the kingdom of the Antichrist. But the Bible does not tell us specifically. Number two, the name of the beast, in effect, of the first beast of Revelation 13, verse 17. His name is not found in Scripture, so it cannot be known. Revelation 13, verse 17. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. And then, finally, number three, the number of his name. Revelation 13, verse 17 and 18. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, 
there's number one, or the name of the beast, that's number two, or the number of his name. Here is the wisdom, let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, three score, and six. Revelation 15, verse 2. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast, and over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name, standing on the sea of glass, having the harps of God. This will be the number of a man. There are many Greek and Hebrew names that have a numerical value of 666. Especially is this true of foreign names, which are transliterated into Hebrew or Greek. There is no hidden meaning to the number, for the very expression here is wisdom, native insight or understanding, shows that it is easy to understand, for it is given here as 666, and anyone can understand this. It is trying to learn the name and the mark by the number that is all foolish speculation, and it should be rejected and not indulged in at all. The brands of the beast cannot be taken until the last three and one half years of this age or in the great tribulation. Therefore, it is impossible for one to take any of his brands or worship him today, for he is not now on the scene. When he does come and these things begin to be fulfilled, those who take any one of the brands or worship him will be doomed to eternal hell forever, and in this life will be plagued by the vile plagues. We see these truths stated in Revelation 14, verse 9 through 11. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up for ever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast in his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. These are the actual plagues that's going to come down upon men who have taken the mark of the beast. Revelation chapter 16, verse 1 through 21. And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast, and upon them which worshipped his image. And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became as the blood of a dead man, and every living soul died in the sea. And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of waters, and they became blood. And I heard the angel of the waters say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art and wast and shall be, because thou hast judged thus. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. And I heard another out of the altar say, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. And the fourth angel poured out his file upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. And men were scorched with great heat, and blasphemed the name of God, which hath power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seed of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues for pain. And blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores, and repented not of their deeds. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet, for they are the spirits of devils working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth, and of the whole world, to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked in the sea of shame. And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. 
And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, and great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. And every island fled away, and the mountains were not found, and there fell up on men a great hail out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent. And men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, for the plague thereof was exceeding great. No man will ever know what the mark or the name of the beast will be until after he comes, which will be after the rapture of the church and after the ten kingdoms are formed inside the old Roman Empire as seen in chapter 20. In the sense of making Satan the opposite of God, the Father, in work and position, the Antichrist the opposite of Jesus Christ as to birth, incarnation, life, work, death, resurrection, and the false prophet the opposite of the Holy Spirit as the executive of Satan and Antichrist, there is no teaching of such a parallel in the Bible, but regarding these three persons being three separate and distinct persons about this, there is no question, for it is plainly shown in all of the revelation where they are mentioned. Revelation 12, verse 3. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. This is the devil himself. Revelation chapter 12, verse 7 through 17. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels, and prevailed not, neither was there a place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And when the dragon saw that he was cast into the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child, and to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness into her place where she is nourished for a time and times, and half a time from the face of the serpent. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Revelation chapter 13, verse 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast, who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God, to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints, and to overcome them, and power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. 
and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed, and he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. Revelation 16, verse 13 through 16. And I saw three unclean spirits come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. Revelation 19, verse 20. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire, burning with brimstone. So you see, the beast and the false prophet are seen as separate individuals there that are being cast into hell. Revelation 20, verse 1 through 10, talks about Satan being put in the bottomless pit. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand, and he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that he must be loosed a little season. And I saw thrones, and they set upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, in which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither he received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison, and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth, and compassed the camp of the saints about, and the beloved city, and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them, and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. In Bible history, there are other examples of three persons who could be called a satanic trinity because of their close cooperation and work together against God. There were Satan, Nadab, and Abihu, for example. Leviticus chapter 10, verse 1 through 10. And Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took either of them his censer, and put fire therein, and put incense thereon, and offered strange fire before the Lord, which he commanded them not. And there went out fire from the Lord, and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. 
Then Moses said unto Aaron, This is it that the Lord spake, saying, I will be sanctified in them that come nigh me, and before all the people I will be glorified. And Aaron held his peace. So Moses called Mishael and Elzaphan, the sons of Uziel, the uncle of Aaron, and said unto them, Come near, carry your brethren from before the sanctuary out of the camp. So they went near and carried them in their coats out of the camp, as Moses had said. And Moses said unto Aaron, and unto Eleazar, and unto Ithamar his sons, Uncover not your heads, neither rend your clothes, lest ye die, and lest wrath come upon all of the people. But let your brethren, the whole house of Israel, bewail the burning which the Lord hath kindled, and ye shall not go out from the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, lest ye die, for the anointing oil of the Lord is upon you, and they did according to the word of Moses. And the Lord spake unto Aaron, saying, Do not drink wine, nor strong drink, thou nor thy sons with thee, when ye go into the tabernacle of the congregation, lest ye die. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations, and that ye may put difference between holy and unholy, and between unclean and clean. Another example is Satan, which is always the instigator of trouble, Hophni and Phinehas. Eli's sons, 1 Samuel 2, verse 12. Now the sons of Eli were sons of Belial. They knew not the Lord. 1 Samuel 4, verse 11. And the ark of God was taken, and the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, were slain. Also Satan, Ananias, and Sapphira were actually three more that could be classified as the unholy trinity, so to speak. We see this in Acts chapter 5, verse 1 through 11. But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession and kept back part of the price, his wife also being privy to it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why hath Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? Whiles it remained, was it not thine own, and after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost, and great fear came on all them that heard these things. And the young men arose, wound him up, and carried him out, and buried him. And it was about the space of three hours after when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. And Peter answered unto her, Tell me whether you sold the land for so much. And she said, Yea, for so much. Then Peter said unto her, How is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the Spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door, and shall carry thee out. Then fell she down straightway at his feet, and yielded up the ghost. And the young men came in, and found her dead, and carrying her forth, buried her by her husband, and great fear came upon all the church, and upon as many as heard these things. There could be many others that could be classified as the unholy trinity, like Satan, Janes, and Jambres. They withstood Moses and Aaron, but they were in Pharaoh's court. But their relationship did not in any case make them a special satanic trinity as some teach regarding Satan, Antichrist, and the false prophet. There is no ground for and no need for such speculations as a satanic trinity, and it certainly is no explanation of any detail of the book of Revelation. Mystery Babylon Destroyed It is at this particular time in the fulfillment of the revelation that the ten kings will turn on the great whore of Revelation chapter 17 and destroy her, and give their kingdoms to the beast or the Antichrist for the last three and one half years of this age. Revelation 17, verse 12 through 17. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. These have one mind, and shall give their power and strength unto the beast, these shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them, for he is Lord of lords and King of kings, and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. 
And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the horse sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. For God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will, and to agree, and give their kingdom unto the beast, until the words of God shall be fulfilled. The Antichrist can then be worshipped as God in the temple of God at Jerusalem. Daniel 9, verse 27. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. Daniel 12, verse 7. And I heard the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven, and swear by him that liveth for ever, that it shall be for a time, times, and a an half. And when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. Daniel 12, verse 7. Matthew 24, verse 15. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3 through 12. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not, when I was yet with you, I told you these things? And now ye know what withholdeth, that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie that they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. We also have seen in Revelation chapter 13 verse 1 through 18 the beast rising up out of the sea. And then the false prophet following him. In Revelation 14, verse 9 through 11, we see this third angel flying through the midst of heaven, crying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast or his image, he will be tormented in the presence of the holy angels and the Lamb forever, and have no rest day nor night. Revelation 15, verse 2, we saw a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast, and over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name, and they stood upon the sea of glass, having the harps of God. Revelation 16, verse 2, And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast, and upon them which worshipped his image. Revelation 19, verse 20, and the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. Revelation 20, verse 4 through 6. And I saw thrones, and they set upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until a thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection, on such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. Antichrist could never be the sole object of worship in the last 42 months or 1260 days of this age until Mystery Babylon, the great whore, is destroyed. 
since he is to be worshipped at this time, then it has to be that her destruction is imminent at that point in time. Revelation chapter 17, verse 12 through 17. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet, but received power as kings one hour with the beast. Which, as we studied earlier, one hour means just a, a period of time. These have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. They shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them, for he is Lord of lords and King of kings, and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the horse sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. For God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will, and to agree, and give their kingdom unto the beast, until the words of God shall be fulfilled. This will take place at this particular time, that is, in the middle of Daniel's 70th week. We will stop here and we will pick up the next time on the last division of the tribulation week, Revelation 14, verse 1 through chapter 19, verse 21, chapter 23, the seven parenthetical statements. Till the next time, may God bless you in Jesus' name.